night, the coalition members of parliament approved the meatless skeleton budget for 2019. No meat in the budget for the people. No amendments were presented to change the draft budget in the interest of the poor and needy households in St. Martin, neither by the MPs of the coalition or neither by the MPs nor by the MPs either of the opposition. As anti-poverty platform Consumers Coalition, we have provided two examples of amendments that had to be presented to the budget in our press conference of the past weeks. One, we calculated and illustrated, for instance, that the social allowances were budgeted for only 5.6 million Antillian guilders, whereas 286 million Antillian guilders was needed to supplement the income of the almost 20,000 persons with an individual income of less than 2,000 Antillian guilders a month. And based on the maximum of the available resources principle in the state, funds of the Netherlands had to be budgeted in the 2019 budget for the people not to be in poverty. Number two, the house rent subsidies, we illustrated that nowhere in the budget, budget rent subsidies were mentioned. We calculated and illustrated that a total of 105.6 million Antillian guilders had to be budgeted to assist the poor and needy to supplement their rent payment amount. These funds had to be forthcoming from the Netherlands based on the rights to adequate and affordable housing for all citizens in the kingdom that has to be guaranteed by the kingdom government according to Article 43 of the Charter of the Kingdom. None of the MPs proposed such a proposal for the poor and the needy households. Only one budget amendment was presented by one MP. MP Tamara Leonard presented a budget amendment for funds to be reserved for a pilot breakfast program in public schools for the first half of 2019-2020 school year. According to the MP, public schools have an average of 50 children who go to school every day without food or without having breakfast. The UD-SMCP coalition MPs approved this amendment while the opposition and AUSP MPs voted against this amendment. Although the budget amendment for the breakfast program for hungry school children is very sympathetic, the project proposal is an example of poverty alleviation and not of poverty eradication of the households. MPs were criticizing the skeleton budget and the government policies, but none of the MPs came with a structural budget amendment to favor the poor and the needy. The MPs have the right to ask questions and to give their opinion on our behalf. But as legislators, they have to present budget amendments and legislate these amendments to address the social needs of the poor and the needy. Just as eloquent as they have criticized the fact that based on CFT and the Netherlands government instruction to pay the Dutch police officers government had to amend the budget even though they criticized the fact that no money our own police officers have to receive their salary adjustment since 10 10 10 none of the MPs came with such an amendment in the budget. As coordinators of the anti-poverty platform, 
we will seek a meeting with the Council of Ministers and Parliament to present our proposals for the 2020 budget to eradicate the poverty, which hopefully can be included in the government proposal to be presented before September the 1st, 2019 and or amended before January the 1st, 2020. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Um, the anti-platform of poverty of St. Martin and also the University of St. Martin for inviting me to um, participate uh, tonight in this uh, panel and debate which I consider not only for me uh, a chance to express myself and to get some knowledge uh, on the theme of on the theme of slavery and um, reparation, but also it gives me a chance to um, share with you some of let, let's say my my involvement in the in Crusoe especially. Uh, uh, with our past uh, slavery and also uh, the present theme of um, formal apology and also for reparation of the long period that um, our ancestors, and when I talk about Curacao, because you, as you know, I'm from Curacao, and it's there that I for myself and uh, got involved in the movement of uh, 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 slavery past and also what needs to be do done now uh, in that matter, in that um, 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 issue. And when I, as I said, when I think and when I speak about um, slavery or past, of course I think back of Curacao. And when I think of Curacao uh, in the history, I also think of the Dutch, because it's Curacao against the Dutch when uh, we talk about this topic. It was in 1634, a long time ago, almost four centuries already, that the Dutch first as they say, set feet in Curso. Curso was in uh, that time a colony of Spain. As you know, Spain and Portugal were the first countries to come to this he hemisphere. They say they 
they discover it, but it was there already. It had its people, its its traditions, its economy, and 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 even religions. So it was not like discover it didn't exist, but they were. I have to admit, more powerful than the original people, especially uh, here in the Caribbean, uh, who live on uh, the islands of the Caribbean. Uh, several, um, let's say, Indians uh, population, for example, in Curso and the neighboring countries, we had the Arawaks. And when the Sp Spaniards came, they enslaved uh, the Indians, and that happened to uh, on the other islands of the Caribbean, and they say, of course, I don't know if it's true, but they say that the Indians were no good as slaves because they they, they were not strong enough to uh, do the work that the Spaniards forced them to do. So at a certain moment when uh, the Dutch came, uh, probably they thought so too, and they sent all the Indians and the Spaniards who were left to the other countries. And I have to say, when I talk about Curso, I also talk about Bonaire, I talk about Aruba. Aruba less, because they say Aruba had uh, less slavery uh, of Africans. But I also talk about um, St. Martin, Seba, and Stasia. Because here too, we had slaves, we had slavery, and we had a slavery system on the island. And um, as everybody knows, when you, when you talk about slavery, the most important, um, let's say, consequence of slavery is that the persons lose their freedom, especially in, in, in the beginning, that um, Africans were taken from Africa, put on a ship, and, and it was a rough journey coming to the Caribbean. And um, many of them did not make it they say uh, at about 30 to 40 percent of the Africans who were shipped to the Caribbean as prisoners, as slaves, did not make it alive. And when you think about it, it's uh, especially the long period of time that the slave trade uh, lasted. If I think, for example, in Curso, it was from 1634, since the Dutch came to Curaçao, till 1863. And that is about 230 years of slavery. Just think about it. Many generations, not only of original Africans who were taken from Africa, but also their children. Because slavery was not only, uh, 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 let's say, some kind of business, some kind of commercial. Of course, the slaves had their own lives too. But the slave owners saw it also as an investment if, 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 uh, because if they were male and female, more male than females. But the children of the slaves, of a female slave, is born as a slave. And it went on all those centuries like that, and uh, uh, especially uh, the day of the, of the period of the, after the abolition.
How you doing? You busy? I hear just paying some bills, taking care of business. You know what it is? Hey, I know you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want. I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, ma. I'll get online with Bib now. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices. The Winwood Islands Bank. Now your online banking partner. Parliament of St. Martin, draft motion 2018-2019. The Parliament of St. Martin and its public meeting of July 2nd, 2019, considering, one, that in October 2010, the constitutional reform was concluded where Curaçao and St. Martin became autonomous countries in the kingdom. Two, that it was agreed that the Netherlands would assist, would assist the new entities with creating a sound start start position at the beginning of the new const constitutional constellation. For this reason, the Netherlands declared to be prepared to reduce a great deal of the debt of the Netherlands Antilles and the island territories. The island territories had to implement structural improvements, especially in the financial management, in order to avoid a situation whereby new debts that are too high are created in the future. In joint consultation, the Netherlands, Curaçao, and St. Martin agreed in a consensus kingdom act that independent supervision will take place on the finances of the countries. Three, that since the constitutional reform on October 10, 2010, there are two boards, the CFT Bonaire, Centre Stations and Sabre, and the CFT Curaçao and St. Martin. The legal base of the CFC, CFT and um, BES is the wet financing open barrel, Lechamen, Lechamen, Bonaire, St. Martin, St. Eustatius, and Sabre. Um, the CFT, Curaçao, and St. Martin executes financial supervision as regulated in the consensus Reichswet, Financial Tusek, Curaçao, and St. Martin. Four, that the Board of Financial Supervision, Curaçao and St. Martin, has the role to monitor and advise. The tasks of the Board are directed towards the adoption and execution of the budgets that are balanced within the limitations as agreed upon and the control of, of, the, of the total loans. In order to ensure that the financial supervision occurs in optimal manner, the board has, has to have the insight in the budgetary cycle and the financial management of the countries. The board evaluates whether adopted budget and an agreement with the norms as stated in the consensus Reichswet Financial Tuzik, Curaçao, St. Martin, and provides an, an advice if necessary. The board may provide solicited and unsolicited, unsolicited advice on the draft budget. The, uh, that under Article 4 of the IMF's Article of Agreement, the IMF holds bilateral discussions with members usually every year. A staff team visits the country, collects economic and financial information, and discusses with officials the country's economic developments and policies. On return to headquarters, the staff prepares a report 
which forms part of the basis for discussion for, by the executive board. On January 15, 2019, the executive board of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, concluded that 2018, Article 4 consultation discussions with Curacao and St. Martin. Six, the comments from the International Monetary Fund that austerity measures imposed by the Kingdom Council are counterproductive. The IMF warned in a report on June 10, 2019, that the advice for imposition of conditions on Curacao will cause major damage to the economy and put the goal of restoring public finances further out of reach. Seven, taking into consideration that St. Martin falls under the financial supervision of the CFT, resolves A, that Parliament of St. Martin and the government will carefully analyze the statement and commitments coming from the IMF regarding Curacao and its financial management, as a consequence from the standpoint, evaluate and or re-evaluate the CFT structure and modus operandi and or independent functioning. B, to commence discussions about removing this kind of stifling financial supervision and termination of the Reichswert Financial Tuzik to be replaced by an improved St. Martin's financial oversight system and budget control, and goes over to the order of the day. Copies of the motions are to be sent to the governor of St. Martin and the government of St. Martin. This motion was brought by MP Sarah Westcott Williams, um, and it was uh, signed by MP Franklin Myers, MP Bejlani, MP George James, MP Luc Mercelina, MP Tamara Leonard, MP Chanel Brownbill, MP Franz Richardson, MP Egbert Duran, and MP Claude Peterson. We now go over to the voting on this motion. Does anyone require roll call? I said the other day that we were at a crossroad. St. Martin was at the crossroads. <clears throat> and we gotta make up our minds where it is we want to go. As Mr. Chairman, when you try to take on a battle opposing an integrity chamber, and the same people that supported it not once but twice, and then when you try to fight off the Dutch with what I call an indecent proposal, they fight against that. And today, a challenge is being put, in my opinion, to the government. And one that I'm saying, we can now go back in the rhetoric of, have we not changed government or if the hurricane didn't come? Because the law says on the financial supervision, not that I'm saying it's the greatest thing, we have always complained about how it actually works. But, after three years of balanced budgets, you can get rid of it. But if Parliament feels that the task is now put to the government to go and wrestle with the Dutch government under the guise of the Kingdom government to do away with it, they got my blessing. They have my blessing. So therefore, Mr. Chairman, while I kind of smirk and laugh about it all. I say for, and I wish the Council of Ministers good luck. Thank you, MP Marlin. Um, MP Mercelina? For. MP Myers? Allow me to motivate my vote, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think it's important that uh, we start somewhere. There's a saying that the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. And this is, it's very important, I think, in our, in our case to become a country. There were a lot of things that, in theory, was, seemed good, but in practice, they're causing St. Martin and the development of, of St. Martin um, 
a serious amount of um, a serious amount of pressure. Uh, and while I understand that, why I could understand why a, a financial oversight committee would have been put in place to look at the, 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 the finances of not only St. Martin and Curacao, but the best islands as well. Um, the practical application of that is stifling St. Martin. St. Martin especially, because one thing we can say about this little 37 square mile island, we have, we have had um, free, free trade, if you want to call it that, and we were, able, we were able to develop St. Martin to what it is because of our ability to dream and bring those, dream, those, dreams, those dreams to fruition. Um, and as such, I believe, and especially from that report from the IMF, which is questioning the independent nature of the CFT. I think that is a far-reaching statement, and as such, Mr. Chairman, I vote for this motion. Thank you, MP Myers. MP Richardson? MP Westcott Williams. For Mr. Chairman. MP Bishlani. For. MP Bryson. Mr. Chairman, allow me to motivate my vote. Mr. Chairman, the motion before us, in theory and what we've, uh, the considerations and what it resolves to do, is a good motion. It is something that I think we should go forward and as, as a people, look to really question the things as pointed out by MP Myers. Mr. Well, let me say like this, Mr. Chairman. The motion, I have belief in, but I will not um, simply pass this motion without giving one reservation, and that reservation is my lack of confidence that the government, based on their track record thus far, would actually execute this in the manner as prescribed in the motion. However, Motions in, in Parliament, as we know, can be picked up in the future, for example, by a future government. So for that reason, I vote for.